just want to like uh, give a briefing of uh, what what you're going to do. So like uh, Sangi mentioned, we have uh, broken this session into five talks, right? Uh, the idea is like uh, we'll probably take 15 minutes each in each of those talks and uh, explain certain fundamental things uh, that we want to highlight. Right? So basically, we are going to talk about uh, a new product called WS2 IoT Server. Right? Now, uh, if you know about WS2, we are primarily focusing on the middleware. Right? And uh, this is basically an extension of our middleware platform into devices, the world of devices. So basically, we are focusing on uh, recognizing the fact that there are devices out there that uh, we want to connect to and at the same time managing those devices, device management. So uh, then after those five talks, so those talks will be uh, introducing the IoT server, then uh, uh, introducing something called a device plugin, which kind of extends the IoT server. Then uh, on the analytics side, what we can do with analytics. And then uh, the fourth topic would be uh, other ways of extending IoT server, like if you want to like, write your own uh, transport or write your own dashboard, etc. what to do, right? Then the fifth topic is uh, on the documentation, what you have done in the documentation. So after those uh, five brief talks, we will, uh, uh, we will pretty much like uh, we are done with the talks, but then we have uh, four demos that are like located uh, around this area. So you are free to go to those uh, demos and uh, just go through what, what, what we are doing there. And uh, you can ask uh, any question, what you, how we have done that, uh, what are the things that you have done to, uh, what have things that you have used to implement those demos, etc. So uh, basically, we pretty much wanted uh, you guys to go through the demo and understand uh, everything uh, from the scratch uh, with regard to the IoT server. OK, so uh, I would like to first uh, introduce uh, uh, Ruan Yatavara, who would do the introduction slides uh, on IoT server, and uh, yeah. Thanks. Okay, so uh, like, are you guys by any chance uh, like currently participating in the WS2 IoT server beta program? Uh, have you guys uh, like ah great, so we have one. And uh, like, uh, uh, are you guys like aware of the product? Like, you know, I hope you guys are like you know, aware of the WS2 stack. Uh, so. Uh, what the WS2 IoT server is, is basically a distribution of uh, a proven set of integrated WS2 components packed together, uh, like uh, uh, focused, uh, like that are focused in a mobile plus IoT, uh, uh, you know, a device management package, uh, enhanced with, uh, like, you know, like coupled with analytics uh, and a bunch of communication protocols. So that's what IoT server is. Uh, uh, so, like, uh, uh, in the, 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 like you know, I, I believe uh, like you know, just uh, more than like you know, rather than just putting out a bunch of words, this this graph, uh, like you know, this uh, picture here basically describes the IoT server uh, uh, like, uh, very well. So like uh, um, like you know, this if you take this, so like you know, uh, if you take uh, the IoT server, you would have the devices, the devices layer on the bottom layer. Uh, which would basically have uh, the hardware components like uh, like your IoT devices, the, the uh, uh, Arduinos, uh, like uh, your Android phones, uh, ESP boards, and so on and such forth. And uh, like you know, those devices would be having agents running on them. So these agents would be pushing out data into the WSO2 like uh, uh, middleware platform. So I, I would uh, come into like you know a blown up picture of this uh, uh, later on. So uh, like uh, what what this uh, uh, middleware stack would do is basically uh, uh, provide you uh, with a bunch of features, uh, as in like device management features, identity management features, uh, like uh, user management features, and uh, uh, like and, and analytics capabilities, and all of those uh, capabilities are accessible for you all. Uh, uh, in, in uh, like you know, uh, in the inbuilt consoles, like we have the analytics console, analytics dashboard, and the API store, uh, and so on, uh, and and things like that. So like, uh, if when you have devices, you would want to do like you know, you have, like you know, the end result is basically uh, to control these devices, uh, like you know, write applications to them, and uh, and and basically visualize the data coming from these devices. Uh, like uh, in in dashboards. So like in order to visualize them, uh, like you know we would have uh, 
the uh, like uh, augmentation done from the platform. Uh, so so basically, uh, what the IoT survey is basic uh, is uh, uh, is a is a like you know uh, materialization of the W uh, is the of the reference architecture that we have for IoT. Uh, so like uh, so uh, the way we envision. So we would have the devices, and the devices would be communicating to uh, like in, uh, in, uh, enterprise integration uh, software like uh, uh, e uh, an ESB uh, or a message broker. Uh, we are like uh, MQTT, HTTP, Z-Wave, or like you know, uh, or like uh, like uh, like those transports, and uh, and the device and and the event streams coming from those uh, uh, devices would be summarized via the event processor and the analytics engine, and then the output would be visualized via the dashboarding capabilities and exposed to the outside world via the API management capabilities. And uh, while doing that, we would provide device management capabilities to the connected device management framework that we have, as well as uh, like you know provide device identity and user identity, as in like the owners of those devices, uh, uh, we would be providing identity management through the identity uh, like and access management uh, capabilities of our platform. Uh, I believe the like and if you have any questions, you you'll have to keep it towards the end because you know, yeah, we are restricting questions to, to them. Uh, cool. Uh, so. So uh, the IoT service actually uh, just a snippet of what uh, we offer as a platform. So like uh, if you take the IoT server, it would have the IoT analytics capabilities, uh, like you know, uh, coupled with uh, uh, what we call uh, like uh, like uh, like the device management capabilities, and most importantly, what we call, like you know you would be able to enroll devices, your devices to our like you know platform using uh, what we uh, something called the device plugin, which my colleague Gisar would be uh, elaborating elaborating upon uh, later on. So what devi this device uh, 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 plugin is basically a, a predefined structure with which you would declare your components so that it would be uh, enrolled uh, to the platform uh, seamlessly. So, like, I would be getting uh, getting into more detail on this uh, later on. Uh, and like, uh, uh, so, like, you know, that that basically covers IoT server. So, the IoT platform. The, uh, what we as a platform offer is basically uh, 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 like an addition to uh, what what we offer as the like IoT server. As in, like, uh, the the the, the uh, like. Uh, uh, in addition to the device management capabilities with the platform, you gain uh, fine grain authentication and uh, machine learning machine learning capabilities and uh, workflow integrations. As in, uh, like you know, you would be able to uh, like you know uh, plug in workflows uh, and and federated identity capabilities uh, through uh, to your like you know uh, uh, device uh, like you know uh, in IoT story uh, with uh, the IoT platform that we have. Okay. So that basically covers what we have. What, what I was wanting to tell you about the platform and uh, the IoT. Like, if in, when you uh, when we talk about IoT, like I'm going to talk a little bit about the IoT ecosystem that we have in Vision. So, uh, so we we uh, we have identified four categories. We like you know basically uh, uh, on the broader picture, there's like four categories uh, when it comes to the IoT infrastructure, uh, IoT uh, IoT ecosystem. So you would have the device manufacturers over there, uh, and we would have uh, a bunch of developers who would want to who would, like you know the device manufacturers are basically the the hardware vendors. The hardware vendors would uh, face the challenge of uh, like you know wanting to like you know give a framework with which uh, uh, like you know they would be able to. Uh, do things like uh, remote device management, and uh, say, for an example, if I'm a hardware, uh, if if I'm like you know, if I'm a thermostat manufacturer, I would want to have uh, people have a software uh, with which, once they purchase, they would be able to enroll their devices. So, like, uh, uh, and and uh, and uh, like, if you if you would, that would be the like you know, if you leave out the hardware manufacturer's use case, there would be application developers who would want to like who would not want to do anything uh, with the hardware as such, but would want to write applications so that they would want to control uh, like uh, these devices. So like, you know, uh, and, and, and uh, like, you know, uh, 
uh, we all know that we get uh, firmware updates to our phones. So like we would be able to, yeah, uh, we would be able to like, you know, uh, so this firmware management, uh, like what, what's to control, what's running in the, uh, uh, like, you know, phones, we would, uh, the, so that would be a challenge faced by the, uh, like, you know, developers. And uh, most importantly, uh, uh, like uh, uh, when it comes to like you know uh, I, uh, when, it's com when it comes to like you know, Internet of Things world, it is very important to uh, like, you know, make your data uh, and uh, like you know uh, 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 like uh, 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 data secure and uh, ma make uh, access to these devices secure. Uh, so uh, and uh, and and uh, yeah. And uh, there would be, there would, it would, uh, and there would also be a need to have uh, like a platform with which you could manage the events that are coming from these devices. Uh, and uh, all of this needs to be done in a scalable way, uh, and uh, integrated. And it, they, all of this needs to be integrated to the rest of your in, uh, uh, integration platform. When rest of you are like you know software platform as uh, like you know if I'm a company, I would want uh, my device story to basically link up to uh, what uh, like you know what I have currently ongoing as a system. Uh, so this is our target group, as in like uh, who who are we ta who are we say, who are we targeting uh, with uh, the IoT offering that we ha IoT server that we are trying to put out. Uh, so our main target would be the device manufacturers. We would want them to write plugins so that they could r enroll uh, the devices that they manufacture to our platform and uh, and and what and the next uh, next people next set of uh, people are the system integrators we would want uh, them to basically uh, uh, like you know seamlessly integrate their current uh, uh, like you know uh, software platforms uh, to the devices uh, that they want to in, uh, like you know have in their like you know uh, flow So uh, let me talk a little bit about the architecture that we have in the WSO2 uh, IoT server. So as you all know, uh, like you know, the, the the backbone of all WSO2 software is the carbon, uh, like the, the carbon uh, framework. And on top of that, we offer like you know, uh, in the WSO2 IoT server, we offer device management capabilities that uh, basically allow you to push policies and like you know, manage the users that are associated with these devices, and uh, like you know, uh, push uh, like you know, do operations management and uh, configurations management of these devices. So that we offer in the device management layer, and I would get into this later. So, like you know, uh, the plugin is how you enroll your devices into the WS IoT platform, and uh, all of the all of the uh, all of the uh, like uh, uh, services that are exposed in uh, like evident in these devices are exposed to the outside world via the device management APIs. And last but not least, we have the transport. So we have uh, like you know architected the platform in such a way that you would be able to write your own transports. As in, like you know, if you want to write a new transport, if you, somebody wants to write uh, like uh, 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 the thread protocol into uh, the WSO IoT server, it would basically extending and writing uh, the WSO to uh, like uh, the the transport layer so that it can be enrolled. Uh, and uh, complementing all that would be the analytics capabilities. So the analytics would basically. Uh, process the th uh, process uh, the streams that are coming from these devices and do predictive analysis maybe and uh, like you know batch analysis and uh, like you know transform these outputs into uh, like you know da uh, dashboard visualizations. So uh, I, I touched upon uh, the concept of a, a uh, plugin. So, like, uh, uh, as my uh, colleague Gisara would uh, like you know elaborate on. Later, ah. sorry, it's not Gisar, it's somebody else. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, uh, so, like in this plugin, uh, uh, we would have uh, uh, a couple of things. We would have um, uh, the uh, like we would, we would first of all have uh, like you know this is a Maven archetype. So, uh, uh, like uh, so uh, so basically in the plugin you would have uh, the agent that goes into the device and. Uh, and you would have the device APIs. You would basically architect the APIs. Uh, uh, 
uh, uh, that uh, like you know are present in this uh, 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 like you know plugin uh, pl pl present in the devices, uh, and you would have a UI corresponding to this, and you would have the analytics scripts that uh, basically do the uh, be do uh, stuff on the uh, output that's coming from these devices, and. Uh, we would have then there's all and we provide a Maven archetype that basically uh, generates this plugin for you so that it's easier for you to develop. Okay, cool. Uh, so there's more like you know I, I basically touched upon all the points and uh, there's there's the, the so like uh, you you could always like uh, so there's a bit more uh, as in like uh, you could you could always uh, like you could uh, the, the, the the use the Maven archetype to basically uh, generate the device types and. And you could, uh, like, you know, I think I touched upon all this earlier. <laughs> and last, last but not least, you are welcome to write, uh, basically, uh, extend uh, the code that we have uh, in our repositories and uh, basically contribute because we are an open source company. And uh, thank you very much. So uh, next we have uh, Charita who is uh, going to talk about the device plugin. So basically, uh, Ron just briefly mentioned, uh, but Charity is going to talk in detail about uh, what a device plugin is and what's the anatomy and uh, what you have to do to like create a plugin and uh, what are the supporting tools. So I uh, uh, hope you all of you guys have some brief idea about the IoT server and what is its capabilities. And uh, with Ruan's explanations and details, you already aware with what is going on with the IoT server and what you can do with it. So now I'm going to talk about writing a new device type plugin and details of the device type plugin one by one to understand how to write a device type and what are the inside things in that particular device type. So let's begin. Here, as uh, Ruan explained earlier, you can see that our device type consists with four main components. In that components, we have device management plugin, device APIs, device management UI bits and analytics scripts. Apart from these four major components, we have another component called agent. That agent is supposed to deploy on particular device type or hardware that you are going to create. So apart from that device agent, we have four deployable components in IoT server which we call as device type plugin. So you are now looking at that device type plugin. So this is a uh, sample device type plugin already available in the IoT server samples. It's, uh, we call it as a fire alarm and that sample actually mimics a fire alarm device based on real hardware device called ESP8266. So in here, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, one by one component and describe the uh, components uh, with their features and functionalities. Before that, I would like to mention that this device type plugin can be easily generated using uh, WSO2 Dev Studio enabled Maven archetype. So that archetype can be used to generate this particular folder structure and that components in basic levels. So then you only have to extend that capabilities or that code generated in that particular Maven archetype tool, right? So I think all of you clear at that point what we can do with device type plugin and how it could be generated. So in here, you can see that there are a few components in there, analytics component, API component, plugin, and UI component. After we creating those four components, we are wrapping them into a single feature and then going to install that feature into the IoT server. So in here, I'm going to start with device management plugin. So that device management plugin actually uh, Extend, uh, in, uh, implementing that interface defined by WSO2 device management component. That is the component or Java interface that we have in WSO2 IoT server by defining how to create a particular device type. 
So once you implemented that interface, you will be have certain number of methods that in your class and then you have to uh, populate necessary code lines inside that methods to implement your device type. Basically with archetype, we are pre-populated these values and you can have uh, basically almost uh, Java lines that needs to enroll a device type and uh, get configurations or save device type configurations. Uh, even you can uh, rename your device type, modify its parameters. Those can be done with that particular device management plugin, device ma type manager class. So this is a by default generated class and you can uh, make your own customization inside that class to extend the features. Uh, so in here another uh, device management plugin available uh, by uh, interfacing a device management component for the uh, basically uh, giving device type notification features uh, and uh, application manager components and also device manager which we talked earlier. So actually with that class you can uh, specify that particular device type is shared with all users in your uh, tenant spaces. That means you can share this device type across tenants if you need it or you can just provide this device type only for your tenant likewise. So these are actually uh, major implementations that we need to follow when we are cre creating a device type. But believe me, these are generated automatically for you by Maven archetype. You just only need to provide basic configurations and details to set up that environment. So in here, uh, I'm not going to describe each line by line uh, because as this is generated by automatically, but still I want to tell you, you can extend the capabilities in here to implement what you want with WSO2 IoT server, right? So then I'm moving back to device API. Device API is the way that we can interface our device with external systems or UI bits or even you can connect your mobile application that you wrote custom uh, UIs and details with this IoT server exports device type. By implementing that uh, API, we are following uh, SAGA annotations for API definitions. And also, we have access permission model to specify that particular API call can be done by this level of permissions, right? We are indicating that permissions levels in the API implementation so user can easily specify what permissions needs to uh, satisfy to access that particular uh, REST API endpoint, right? So in here, there are a few default uh, automatically generated uh, APIs, uh, API endpoints are there. So in here, you can see that uh, change status method is there to change the status of bulb uh, or fire alarm buzzer that we have in a fire alarm. And also you can see that uh, get sensor status method is in here. That method is supposed to retrieve the analytics data from the IoT server when it needs. So these methods are automatically generated by default with the uh, Maven arc type. So you just only need to modify them if you need to have very custom capabilities with your own, right? So then, uh, right, uh, yeah. So in here, I need to highlight another important thing in device API, it is actually the device management uh, ownership based access control. So with that capability, you can specify that particular user have that permission or capability to access this API endpoint or perform this operation rather than allowing all users to access that particular API endpoint. That means, suppose if we are going to share our device type with our colleagues or our family members, then we need to specify certain, certain API endpoints to our access. And also we need to provide certain API endpoints to public access 
or family member access. To achieve that level, we have that specific model to make sure that API call endpoint can be called by that particular user or not. So these authorization capabilities are there. So here, this is the device management UI. Uh, Rasika will explain that uh, UI components in later with more details. But before that, uh, I'm just going to uh, overview of that uh, UI component. In here, we are writing our UI which as using UUF framework, which is introduced by the WSO2. So it is actually a jaggery application right now. So in that application, we have uh, particular units. So that units contain analytics view, uh, device view, real-time analytics view, and type view. So basically, analytics view uh, gives some graphs and uh, necessary visualizations based on collected data by your devices. So you can implement your own graphs or your own maps to represent data when it's needed. It is actually concerned with the historical data you collected with the IoT server. In uh, real-time analytics view, we are going to demonstrate real-time analytics feed using graphs and maps or whatever you want as a visualization tool. So basically, real-time one is based on actual happening data and analytics view is based on historical data. Right? Uh, in the middle, you can see that device view unit is there. Device view unit is a basically unit that gives details of your device. That means whether it is connected with the WSO2 IoT server, is there any app, uh, enforced policies available with that device type. Likewise, details can be shown uh, using that uh, device view unit. So you can write your own visualizations if you need it. On details, you can uh, display in there if you need it. And finally, device type view is there. That device type view is, uh, that uh, type view is actually uh, provide some guidance who, who's going to download that particular device or who's going to enroll that particular device with WSO2 IoT server. So as a device manufacturer, you can create that uh, UI units by enabling your users to download that particular agent or configure that particular agent to communicate with the IoT server. So that is contained in the type view uh, unit. So Rasika will explain with more details about that units. So until that, I'm going to analytics script section. So in here, uh, as I explained earlier, we are gathering sensor inputs from the devices and then publish them into the IoT server as Ruan said. So this data needs to uh, analyze or we need to run some queries upon those data. So IoT server has mechanism to do that with uh, dash features and uh, that means actually data analytics server features. With that features we can write our own analytics script to summarize data or we can extract our valuable information from that raw data. Those can be done with analytics, uh, analytics scripts. So actually, we are going to define what is the stream for that particular device type. That means whether that device pushing temperature, humidity, or any additional data from uh, its own collection. And then uh, what we can do with that particular data set. So we can define an event stream and grab that data into the IoT server. And then we can persist it, or even we can uh, execute some queries upon that data, those can be done. So in here you can see that uh, basically uh, uh, event stream that's based on IoT, uh, IoT capable device analytics data or data pushed by the device. So in here we have metadata uh, which is relevant to define what is uh, consistent with that data set so as it means. So you can see that uh, we are providing basically device owner, device type, ID, and time flag as a metadata. Uh, in the payload section, we are providing that temperature as a float value 
which is actually real data that device wants to put to the IoT server. So in here, metadata help us to keep in track about the payload data and payload data consists with the valuable information that we need to extract from the device, right? This is basically um, very beginning level of the analytics script. So in here, this is a summarization script. So in that script, you can see that we are going to summarize temperature data uh, from that uh, previous event stream and then uh, insert that data into summarize table. So this type of things can be done with the IoT server. So when you are creating your device type with maybe an arc type, these sample analytics scripts and components are generated automatically. So you can just follow the code and understand what is done by them. So it is very easy to do that since overall uh, device type can be deployed into the IoT server as, you, uh, as soon as you generate it. So you don't want to do any modifications to try out that device type even you generate just it, right? Uh, so then uh, finally, uh, this is my last slide, uh, so device agent. What is actually a device agent? As I explained earlier, device agent uh, provide capability to uh, push data from its own uh, data gathering mechanisms or sensors and then also it can be used to control certain actuators by the IoT server. So these type of capabilities are with the IoT device type agent and actually it is a uh, kind of agent that you can write on top of your device type. So if you are choosing an Arduino, then you have to write a wire program for that using wire language. Or if you are choosing a Raspberry Pi, you can use Python script or even Java program to implement your agent. So we have a bunch of agents already implemented with our samples. So you can just follow up what we done in those samples, what is the basic things that we need to implement that device type agent. These are already there. So I am welcome you to test out that our device type sample and uh, thank you very much for joining with us. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, quickly summarize what we have like spoken so far. So uh, first we try to give a little bit of introduction about uh, what this is all about. Right? So uh, this is actually, uh, even though we call it IoT server, it's more of a framework because like uh, if you download the server that doesn't have uh, any device types uh, that it supports out of the box. Right? So what Charita did was, uh, he explained how you can introduce your own device type into the server so that you can uh, carry on from that point onwards, right? Now, uh, the next section is about, now, uh, with what Charita introduced, you can actually, uh, you are basically telling the server that there's a device type of this particular nature, right? And with that introduction, the server by default supports things like device management, so that uh, there's a device type, right? And then there can be multiple instances of that particular device type. Okay? So uh, when that happens, the server kicks in its device management capability so that, for example, it gives uh, identities for those devices. Or you can go in and create groups, uh, like combining multiple instances of those devices. Right. Then, uh, what happens here is like uh, those devices are typically having either sensors or actuators. Things that you can sense from the device or things that you can perform on top of the device. Right. So, when it comes to sensors, you need to have a mechanism on the server side to collect data or the readings that are coming from the sensors into the server side and perform various uh, operations on top of it. So what our next two speakers are going to talk about is how you can perform that. So uh, let me introduce uh, Shabir and Gisara to talk about the IoT analytics support in the IoT server. Uh, thank you, Sumedha, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, actually, my uh, job is cut short by uh, Charita. You know, he introduced uh, briefly as to 
uh, the analytics scripts and uh, how the uh, analytics is introduced into W2 server at a device level. So as you all know so far, uh, Ruan introduced you all about what IoT server is and then Charita spoke about how you can actually get a device type enrolled into the IoT server. So uh, we, uh, me, myself, and Gisar will speak about an uh, like very important integration or extension to the IoT server. So the whole hype about uh, IoT and devices being connected together is not solely dependent on uh, the connectivity that has been introduced to the devices and uh, uh, them being able to be remotely controlled. Uh, it, it is like uh, truly actualized by ter in terms of uh, the information and the data that it produces and uh, what we can decipher based on what we have uh, gathered uh, by means of a pool of connected devices. So uh, let me uh, walk through this idea uh, in terms of a simple example. Let's say that uh, uh, manufacturer X has a cup. He, he has been usually generating, uh, manufacturing some cups, but then he decides to make it smart by means of uh, introducing uh, connectivity and then giving it the ability to communicate to the server. So what he actually does is that he chooses WSO2 IoT server as a device management platform. Uh, he uh, manufactures his cups and then he creates his own device type for his cup based on uh, uh, the ideas that was explained by Charita previously. And then now he has his IoT server, he has, the WS, uh, uh, he has his uh, device type, the connected cup that is enrolled, uh, that is registered as a device in the IoT server. Now what he does moving ahead is that uh, he, he, is a, he manufactures his devices, sells it to his customers. His customers uh, buys, the, buys these devices and they can actually come to the IoT server, uh, enroll their, uh, their smart cup and start, uh, have, uh, start having feedback about the status of the cup and then they can remotely control this, uh, the cups. In addition to that, uh, by means of the APIs that are exposed, uh, where the, uh, the API gateway capability that we provide from the IoT server, they can uh, they can write third-party applications and then they, they can control their smart cup by means of mobile and other, uh, other devices. So this is about uh, the, the flat story so far. So uh, it, indeed it is, a, it is an ad uh, like added advantage that users have that they are able to control their devices remotely. But then um, uh, what is it there for the manufacturer and the rest of them from their own words? So uh, what truly uh, the true benefits of uh, the connection of devices comes in terms of the device, uh, the data that these devices generate and also uh, the amount of information that we can decipher from the data that we have gathered so far. So uh, if I talk about this manufacturer, let's say now he has all these devices uh, manufactured and communicating to his server. So uh, he has all the information about uh, different, uh, different metrics to the, uh, related to the device and then uh, now the manufacturer can actually uh, run analytics on top of this, using the analytics on top of the data that is generated, he can uh, make strategic decisions in terms of his company. For example, let's say his R&D can decide uh, that how frequently that these, uh, they can see that this, uh, the device has been used more frequently than they expected, and then come up with some uh, new design, uh, design uh, view for their cup, and uh, maybe uh, the marketing or the customer promotions can work on uh, promotions to customers who use it more frequently than, they, uh, than a specific set time frame, so on and so forth. Uh, in addition to that, uh, these are specific device level uh, benefits we have, but then we can look at information and analytics uh, in terms of the context of it. Let's say uh, 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 the device manufacturer actually sees that, uh, actually sees that uh, a set a uh, pool of devices or cups in a specific uh, area has uh, broken uh, in a specific time and then he also notices that that is the same time uh, in which an earthquake occurred. So this comes into benefit for the manufacturer in terms of uh, making long-term decisions. So the, uh, the complete idea of analytics in terms of IoT is to collect the data from these devices and to be able to make decisions uh, that, uh, that strategically improve uh, the function of these connected devices. So, um, so let me briefly uh, outline as to uh, how IoT analytics can be categorized. So, uh, on, a, on a top level, uh, abstract, uh, abstract level, analytics itself can be looked into different, uh, in terms of different metrics. So, for example, we can talk about what type of the data that we are talking about. This can be data that, is, uh, that has a specific uh, data structure or a format, or else this can be data fused or aggregated together that have been collected from different sources together. Or else we can talk in terms of how fast do, the, uh, do you need the results. Do you need the results as and when they are, they are received, or else uh, you can allow it to be collected over some time and then uh, to generate uh, analytics on top of that. Or we can also uh, uh, decide on the metric based on how, uh, how much data to be kept. Uh, are we going to collect all the data or else uh, as and when the data is received, are we going to generate analytics and then purge them out? 
This is another metric. And finally, we have where does the processing on top of the data actually happens. That is, uh, whether, do, uh, whether we collect all the data from all the devices and then we centrally process it. Uh, that, that is more, more towards the idea of cloud computing, or else are we going to uh, make decisions at the, uh, at the edge or the, at, the, at the node level at which the data itself is generated, uh, where fog computing and edge analytics comes into play. So in terms of IoT analytics, uh, the, emphasis, the uh, emphasis in the uh, wso 2 IoT uh, architecture is that uh, we categorize analytics in terms of how fast the results are needed. So do you need the results uh, right now or after some time? So moving ahead uh, in our WSO2's, uh, WSO2 IoT servers architecture, we, uh, the different kinds of analytics is uh, categorized based, on, in, based in terms of uh, how, quickly you need, uh, how quickly is this information valuable to the people who are seeking it. So we have, uh, we have interactive analysis, we have uh, real-time analytics, batch analytics, and predictive analysis. So in terms of interactive analysis and batch analytics, the IoT server comes bundled with uh, the data analytics server uh, components or the features as uh, Charita already explained. So we use the capa uh, capabilities catered by the data analytics server to provide a batch and interactive analysis. On top of that, we have uh, the WSO2 CEP, complex, complex event processes features. Uh, now it, is, it comes uh, bundled with the, with the DAS, DAS itself. So we use uh, the WebSocket uh, extensions that are provided by WSO2 CEP to uh, provide uh, real-time analytics. And in addition, uh, predictive analysis, even though WSO2's machine learning is not uh, directly a part of WSO2 IoT's core, uh, what, we, uh, what, we have, what we have done in a long-term uh, plan is that we allow uh, WSO2 machine learner to grab data from our data, uh, data store and to uh, generate models based on this uh, data that has been collected and to be able to feed the model to, uh, as a CEP execution plan to uh, decide, on, uh, decide on an unknown variable based on the knowns that are uh, generated from the devices. Um, so finally, uh, before I hand it over to Gisra, I'll just give you an overview as to how the data flow happens in the WSO2 IoT server itself. So as you can see, uh, we have uh, different devices pumping in data. Uh, they could be using different uh, protocols, XMPP, HTTP, or MQTT. In this case, uh, I have uh, used MQTT broker. So when you, uh, so when you see MQTT here, uh, we have used the WSO2's message broker bundled into the uh, message broker's components into the WSO2 IoT server. So we have uh, devices publishing uh, information to the WSO2's message broker, and we have WSO2 IoT servers DAS uh, components listening onto the broker to receive uh, the data that has been generated and pu pushed into the uh, IoT server. So uh, like uh, Charita already mentioned, we, with the introduction of a device type, we introduce uh, a device stream for this device type. So we map uh, the data that is coming from these devices to a device stream. So he, uh, he showed you a sample uh, snippet where we write a device stream. So, what, uh, so this, uh, now, these device streams can be, uh, can, can be raw streams, and then later we can convert into uh, rich streams in which that we want to process it. So here, what you can see is that the data that comes from the broker itself is uh, written, uh, like converted to a stream that is connected to the device, and then it's persisted in, uh, in our data store. So on top of that, at the, in, in, at the same time, we can, uh, we can process this uh, raw stream uh, into a rich, nourished stream where we convert it into, uh, into, into a data, data structure that you know, we are of interest to uh, process and to uh, how, uh, how, in terms, uh, how we are going to process it to generate uh, different outcomes, uh, different analytics. So here you can see once it has been persisted, we can uh, uh, like, uh, re-nourish it, uh, persist it in the so store. In the meantime, the re uh, let's say that uh, some, uh, uh, somebody who uses WSO IoT server, they're making use of uh, our real-time capabilities, that is by means of uh, uh, by means of uh, using the WebSocket extension in our CEP. So what we do is that uh, the nourished uh, uh, the data stream is published to our uh, UI publisher, which, which again is a, is a WebSocket, uh, WebSocket endpoint, so that uh, any, uh, any, of any device analytics view or pages that are listening to this WebSocket will be able to uh, receive this information that is uh, coming into the server from devices on real time. Um, in addition to that, uh, you can see that uh, from the data that has been pe persisted into the store, we can, uh, we can run on top of that uh, summarization script. So for example, Charita showed you one of those summarization scripts that we, we, 
wrote to one of the devices, one of our sample devices. So what you can do is that uh, this uh, summarizes in scripts actually uh, from the raw data that has been pumped into our message store, they generate meaningful tables. From that, we can extract uh, information and then uh, provide it, uh, visualize it for the end users. On the other end, uh, on the left corner, you can, you can see the machine learner coming into the picture where uh, we talk about predictive analysis. But uh, what actually does happens is here, uh, we feed in all the data that has been collected in terms of uh, the devices that are communicated to the, uh, the IoT server. And uh, the machine learner uh, uses this information to gener uh, generate its own models. And then we can feed these uh, models back into our server. Uh, and uh, we can uh, and execute it as a CEP execution to uh, ma uh, make valuable decisions based on uh, the future uh, data that is coming into the server. So that's uh, roughly what, uh, that's exactly what, uh, how the flow happens in the WSL server as of now. So in the demos, actually, we'll be able to show you uh, real-time analytics being generated, batch analytics that we already generated from the devices, so on and so forth. Uh, moving ahead, I'm giving it away to Gisera, who will talk about uh, how we look in terms of uh, the future of IoT analytics and the IoT, server, uh, IoT framework of WSO2. Thank you. As you can, Shabir, Shabir mentioned here, the, all, all, all the jargon words and the, all the names need to be related in the context of IoT already mentioned. Now life a little bit easier to get, get in forward. One way of thinking of the IoT analytics is this way. Uh, let's say if you have the device uh, which has two sensors like temperature sensor and humidity sensor, which only, uh, only sending the temperature and humidity. In that case, we can't survive on that day because sometimes then, uh, let's say you have the idea in your homes, you have five, five device sensors there, you need to monitor them. Then the grouping analytics come into the picture. It's not only that. Some industry level, let's take an industry level application. In there, you have to make a solution, solution level analytics on top of the, what they needed. So this, but actually analytics is the one thing, the way they look in it. This is the actually one way of looking into the IoT analytics. Next important thing is the data because. A data is a much, much d d different than what we think. Because in the context of the IoT domain, the lot of data which is, which is related to time. Because let's say the, the energy consumption is the time, then the failure prediction, the specialized in BC, open TCBD, whatever things which are related to the uh, time-based things, we need to cater in some different manner. Sometimes it ca can be a real time, sometimes batch processing, what we require and the location-based data. Because th th those, th those data we can't define actually in the, this is what we need because it's depend on the use case and the time to time it will vary, the location to location it will vary. And not only that, we need to think more and we need to think far more than what we need. The, and we need to process more because look into, because in the first thing is the, 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 let's say you have the 10 device only sending data to the IoT server. Sometimes it's getting bigger and bigger. In that case, can we process all the data in, in, the, in the context of IoT server itself? We can't. In that case, we need to have the mapping between shall we process on the top of the IoT server or the, uh, on, on the edge level, which means the device level itself. It's sometimes we can, we, there we can introduce the device gateway. We can process some data there and we can do some intelligent analytics on there, get the, some, some aggregation or some data fusion on to the IoT server and final thing has to be processed in a IoT uh, server itself. As you can see, the people think in you know, IoT analytics in different contexts, but this is the final architecture which I have been thinking about. The final level, the bottom layer, we have the data acquisitions, where the data coming from and how need to be to get in into the IoT server, how need the processing is to be done. There, then as we required, sometimes we need to get the, the we need to get decisions based on real time. Data is coming, you need to get the this van is moving this way, whatever, as we required. Sometimes we don't need that feature. Sometimes we 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 collecting some data over year and year, then we don't need to decide what we need to do. On that case, we have to go for a batch analytics there. Then there we have the, if you know the contest, I'm just putting on something else. If you know the contest of the parallel universe, there we have the portal, which means we, we exist in some place, then we don't know what to do, we move on somewhere there, then we know this is the place and the how many years, light years coming from there. In likewise, 
the this the, the processing layer complex batch analytics and streams layer we have the raw data but we don't know anything about that the, we can't take any decision on there in that is the machine learner is the port, portal between mapping the no, no unknown data set into the known data set which means we know the this is the data which is coming from we can decide it what we required sometimes we ne we need to do the data on the prediction sometimes we need to model on some, some data because in a let's say in a elections you need to pick the who is going to win this election so in that case we have the data we need to process the model and we need to identify who's going to win there in the, sometimes we need to do anomaly detections then the if you, if, you, if you do have the basics layer, first one and the processing layer, analytics enable layer is the way we can enable what we need. Then we can, on top of there, we can do any scalable analytics there. Uh, as you can see, video processing, traffic analytics, health, whatever we need, we can do. Because we have the, all the layers on top of there. Uh, actually, right now, we have those capability within the IoT server. We build in those things into the IoT server. When we're releasing, those things will be available. And let's say we have the, all the platforms and all things into the one place. But if you do have some mechanisms which can generate sample, sample applications which need, if, if you require the real time, it, which, which can be generated this real, as an execution plan, real time streaming, as the all guys before mentions. Uh, in that case, we have the, the one, one feature which is in our IoT platform there, the template manager, which uh, let's say uh, as uh, one scenario, you have analyzed average and max and temperature in a past hour, which means this is a composed of real time and batch analytics. You, we need to decide the something temperature is coming, you need to, if the temperature increasing, you need to get some decision, which means we have to maintain the real time decision on top of that. Sometimes we have to get some, all those data into the IoT server, we need to some batch processing, we need to take decisions on the, that day. In that case, the template manager has a basic feature to generate all those event streams and the configure real-time and execution plans and gadget and the configure dashboard server and those things itself, which mean this is what, what, what is template manager does, which means sometimes if you need only the real-time thing, which pick the real-time streams and da da dashboard, if we need to some analytics to view, then we can create a template we can gener generate sample scenario into working a working example. Uh, as you can go on that way, you have the, right now you have the working, minimal working model, then on top of that, you can build what we need. Uh, actually, this is, this is our visions into the IoT analytics. Thank you. Yep, uh, so, Next, what we have is, uh, okay, before moving to the next one, uh, basically uh, what we are going to do is, uh, with the analytics, like Gisana mentioned, we are going to have some specialized areas where uh, we treat certain type of data in certain type of way. So they're like uh, pre-built uh, uh, visualizations, pre-built uh, scripts, pre-built alert, alert, alert things that are already available. To, uh, uh, so like Gisana talked about uh, like uh, the things that you can do on, data that are moving. Let's say like you hook up certain uh, sensors on a vehicle that is moving, right? So that is pretty much uh, like uh, moving, moving dots type of a scenario. And uh, you click on that particular dot, and then you go into details of like, okay, what are the type of sensors, what's the speed th this particular vehicle is moving, and uh, how many passengers are in there, what's the weight that it is carrying. So like uh, at the solution level, we start at the solution level, then we dig down into different, different uh, uh, levels based on the type of sensors that it's having, right? So, uh, so far we have talked about the device plugin as a way of extending the IoT service capabilities. And then we also talked about the analytics that we support on top of those device types. Right? Next, uh, Ayub and Rasika are going to talk about uh, all the other ways of extending the IoT server so that you can uh, make it the way uh, you want it to be, and you can make it to support the various protocols, various visualizations that you want uh, to support, and uh, uh, fully deploy a customized uh, version of the server uh, to match your requirements. Okay, Ayub and uh, Rasika. 
Hello everyone, my name is Ayub, and I'm gonna give a brief idea about how we can extend uh, WSO to IoT server. Earlier speakers uh, explained about the capabilities that are already exist on the IoT server, so I'm gonna just take it forward and explain how we can increase the spread the breadth of me, IoT server. And initially I'll just give an, a brief idea about the device type, already Shaita explained it, I'll just give an idea about why we have a uh, such a plugin of, to extend its capability and just skip this slide and I'll just go to what is writing new device types. Uh, by default we have supporting Raspberry Pi, Arduino and other few device type as samples and when it comes to device time, how it works is we have a CDMF core and device types gets registered to the CDMF core. So what happens is whenever a request comes to a CDMF it just passes the, uh, the request to the uh, relevant device types. So in here what ha happens is you have the full authority, I mean the device author has the full authority to control his, his own his own device type. So this is the main idea of having a, creating a, a, a extension for the device type. So in here we have a documentation where you can follow the, uh, the documentation and create your own device types. And then with that you can play with our IT server and then we have uh, explain other capabilities of how we can extend the device type plugin to cater uh, the uh, device author's requirement. So with that, I'll just move into a transport extension which is more uh, important feature when it comes to uh, IoT devices because there are lots of new uh, protocols that is being introduced for connecting with IoT devices. So currently what we are doing is we are supporting three main protocols which is XMPP, MQTT and HTTP. And also we are also supporting, uh, we are working in programs with co-op and OPC, which is OPC is more towards uh, used in industrial hardware, such as in applications such as smart grid and other in, uh, industrial applications. So when it comes to transport, what it does is, uh, if you want to enable a transport uh, in our device type, all you have to do is to add this configuration file, and we have already explained the documentation. If you want to support MQTT, you should at the above configuration, which is that. And if you want to support XMPP, all you just need to do is comment the MQTT part and then uncomment the XMPP config and the device type will support XMPP. So what happens is, here is, we have an architecture which abstracts the transport from the device plugin. So when it comes to uh, transport, there are two ways of communicating with the server. One is uh, the device itself communicating with the server and the other approach is uh, either system or a user communicates with the server. So I'll just go with the second approach where the user and the system communicates with the server. So what ha we have done is we have exposed a device as an API. So you just uh, for a system or a user, all they see is API. So they will, for example, if you want to on a Raspberry Pi, you'll just send an HTTP command and say it on the Raspberry Pi. So it will go to our API manager, which is wrapped through the IoT server itself. And then the request will be passed through the relevant device type API implementation, which Rasik, uh, Charita explained to you all earlier. So then uh, with the uh, JAXRS, the, an operation will be uh, uh, registered and then it will be passed to the push notification. The push notification is, some, is what I explained earlier, which is a set of configuration. For example, if you have a device type, if you want to support XMPP, all you have to do is to add the below configuration to say, uh, which uh, address it needs to connect and the uh, username and the password, uh, so such information. And then what it does is it just gets registered into the code. And then uh, by default we have uh, XMPP and MQTT transport. So when we say uh, what is the push notification provider, in here we have explained XMPP, then the XMPP transport will be picked up and this operation will be passed through the XMPP protocol, and then it will be uh, sent to the device. So uh, with this, we uh, in the documentation, you can follow on how to write your own transport and how to uh, create uh, such uh, input uh, adapters, sorry, output adapters. The next one would be the uh, flow of uh, input adapters. What it does is a device should be able to communicate with the server. So what we have is an, uh, an input adapter is a protocol extension where we can create our own pro input uh, adapters to support different protocols. And when it com a device communicates with the uh, receivers, which is input uh, receivers, and when it receives, 
the data can be sent into uh, process in two approaches. One is, uh, for example, if the device wants to send a command to the, uh, sorry, if a user wants to send a command and expect, expect a response from the device with that for a request, uh, what they can do is they can uh, create their own event subscription for a device type and then process the incoming request. And the other approach which is we recommend would be to when, come, when there's an input, send it to an event receiver, which would be sent, uh, passed through the analytics uh, layer. What it does is, once the event is received, we can process that uh, your events. For example, if you want to uh, format the data according to your requirement, and then if you want to process whether checking, for example, uh, if the car is moving with a speed of 50, and if you want to control the car, uh, car if the speed increased, after, uh, around like 55 or something, if it's more than 55, you should be able to control the speed of the car. So those kind of real-time processing can be done through that event uh, execution plan. And then uh, what it does is the event publisher is, it sends the incoming request into a, you can send this uh, request to other systems. Uh, so for example, if they have a system uh, that needs the incoming request to be processed, which is an external system, not including the IoT server, then you can create an event publisher and then send the request to the relevant system endpoints. And the next would be supported authentication schemes. Currently, what we are doing, we are supporting two main protocols. Uh, one is O2, and then the next one will be set SSL-based uh, approach. So what we do in O2-based approach is we generate a token for each device, and, for, uh, and each device will be, and also we generate an O2 application for each device as well. So with this uh, application and the token, the uh, device can communicate with the server and vice versa. And vice, uh, the, the user is also, when it comes to user also to communicate with the server, currently we have API manager, which is also secured with O2. And also next one would be simple certification enrollment protocol. What we do is, uh, if we want to uh, support certificate-based approach, uh, we have step-based approach to generate certificates, and with that, uh, you could be able to communicate with the server. And also, we have the capability to extend more than these protocols. The, uh, for example, if you want uh, any to token-based approach, uh, you can, uh, there are extension points. For example, if you want to extend the authentication in uh, MQTT, there are relevant extension points to support that. And also, if you want to extend the API and uh, other extension points, there are uh, extension points to follow. The, this information I explained in the documentation as well. And then the analytics extension, I'll just give a brief idea because earlier speaker explained about it. What we do is we collect the data and analyze. The next would be the communication part where you could uh, visualize uh, by, uh, for example, if there's a third party uh, dashboard server or something which is, uh, we want to pump the data, you could use these APIs and pump the data to those. Endpoints and also, for example, if you need a reporting capability, uh, then you could use a third-party library and connect with our platform and generate the reporting. And then uh, this is the earlier slide Gisa explained. I just uh, touch upon the solution analytics part. What we do is uh, in uh, IoT server we have inbuilt uh, per device analytics and group analytics. So when it comes to solution analytics, there are uh, human need, uh, inputs being needed to design what is the solutions. So this kind of requirement can be achieved as uh, achieved by uh, because of uh, our uh, extension capability of providing APIs for the data. And then this is one example so where we have created a Jordish dashboard and it collects the beacon data and plots into a, a graph, sorry, map. And this is one example. So then I'll just move into a creating integration scenario. So if you want to extend the, the IoT server and connect other system, then we need require uh, a mediation, a, a high mediation capabilities. So if we want that, what we do can do is we can have an integration uh, uh, plat uh, more, uh, product. So we can uh, connect that product, or if we require only simple integration, we can directly use the IoT server itself. For advanced integration, we could use integration bus to connect our um, IoT server to connect with other external systems. So with this, uh, Rasika will explain about how we can extend the UI capabilities. Well, uh, hi everyone, I'm Rasika. 
so this is basically about how you can extend your UIs in IoT server. So basically we have provided around uh, seven extensions in uh, IoT server. So uh, basically the first one is uh, type view. So when you are, uh, when you are logging to your IoT server, uh, the first thing you have to do is uh, downloading a device agent. So that device agent should be customizable for your device type. So uh, you can customize your uh, type view, that is called type view, and you can customize that page as you wish. So uh, once uh, you download your device type, uh, device agent, so uh, you log into an IoT server. Then uh, you can see your uh, device under your My Devices. So uh, when you click on your device, then you can see your uh, device view. So that is called the second one, device view. So that is also customizable. Then uh, you can add uh, policies to your device type or device, uh, your own device. So uh, we can provide uh, some policies and that UIs are called add policies and view policies. So um, then uh, we have analytics called uh, batch analytics and runtime uh, real-time analytics. So those analytics uh, such as uh, graphing, all, all, of things, all of these things are customizable uh, using UI extensions provided by IoT server. Then uh, you may also need to uh, customize your device configurations. So when you are writing your custom device type, uh, you can also provide some customization upon your device type. So that is, uh, that is also possible using UI extensions provided by IoT server. So all these extensions are provided uh, by all these capabilities are provided because we are using uh, you, our own UI framework called uh, Unified UI Framework. So this uh, unified UI framework is called uh, try to solve the problem of shareable units with UI and logic. So uh, let's say, for example, if you have a uh, unit called unit one, and uh, there is a unit called unit two. So all together, uh, composing this uh, unit two units, that will create the application one. So uh, the same unit called unit one, and another, another unit called unit three, all together call, uh, will create the application two. So as you can see here, the uh, unit one is uh, shareable between these applications. So at the enterprise level, we can share our units between our multiple applications. So uh, since, this is, uh, since this is not a formal introduction to UUF, I'll uh, stop right there. If you have any question about this framework, so I'll be, uh, I'll be there after the talk. You can ask a question about this UUF. So what it means to you is uh, when, you, uh, when it comes to IoT server, is like uh, when you are seeing this web page on IoT server, so this web page is consisting of multiple units. So these multiple units are reusable, and it may contain also subunits. So uh, when we take example of a structure of a unit, so uh, this uh, unit is written for a device type called virtual file app, and uh, extension point is uh, device sweep. So the naming convention is much similar to uh, Java packaging structure. So in, uh, in this uh, device type, in this uh, extension unit, so you have a public folder. So in public folder, you have basically uh, public resources such as CSS, JavaScript, and images. Uh, and then uh, you have a view, controller, and configuration. So view is basically about uh, UI bits. So how you present uh, UI into your web browser. So then the second one is uh, controller. Uh, uh, when you are creating your view on uh, this unit, uh, we are using a language called handlebars. So this, this is a templating language, uh, basically logicless templating language. So if you don't know anything about handlebars, so you can just write plain HTML. That will work out of the box. And then the second one is controller. So controller is uh, there because uh, when you need to uh, modify your view model before sending into your uh, web browser. So controller, you can use uh, controller if you want if you need to modify your view model. Then the configuration is for framework purposes. For example, if you can, uh, you can uh, add the version 
to your units and also you can extend your units. So that is also possible. So um, much, much interesting stuff are there in uh, UUF framework. So this is the basic structure of a uh, unit. Then uh, we, in CDMA for IoT server, we have created uh, another abstraction layer because uh, we need to uniquely identify your extension units. So we have added some prefixes and suffixes uh, and uh, your device type name is in the middle. So by looking at this uh, naming convention, we are uh, trying to identify your extension units. So uh, for example, if you are accessing device type specific pages, so we are using a URI matcher to uh, pick up your device type name, then add it to a prefix and suffixes, try to resolve our uh, extension units. So uh, the, this is about uh, example UI extension for the virtual file lab. So this uh, device type is using almost all UI extensions. For example, analytics view, device view. So all together, uh, that will automatically wiring, uh, wiring up and uh, automatically pick up by the UUF framework. So these are the so couple of sample pages that is provided in uh, IoT server extensions. So you can uh, write your own device types, own device types uh, with these customizations. So that's about UI extensions. And thank you. So we are down to the last speaker. Uh, and uh, she's going to, she's Samindri. She's going to talk about the documentation. So basically, uh, explain uh, different parts of the documentation so that. Uh, you will understand uh, where to find which, and uh, then uh, we'll break for the demos. Shavindri, over to you. Um, OK, so I'm Shavindri, as uh, Sumedh introduced, and I'm the technical writer for the um, um, IoT server documentation. So basically, um, everything that uh, we spoke about today is covered in our documentation. So I mean, uh, just hearing it will not help you when you try it out. You will need a guide. So I'll uh, sort of <coughs> guide you through how we have done it in WSO2 uh, IoT server. So I'll also touch base on these uh, things. Uh, as Ruan said, uh, our target groups, the documentation's target groups will be also the device manufacturers. Uh, so basically, they've identified a scenario where uh, uh, the device type has to be created. And also, the system integrators will uh, use these device types in a real business case. For example, like uh, use a, create applications using the APIs that have been exposed through the device type. Um, so uh, just let me ask you a question. How many of you have uh, actually used the WSO2 IoTS documentation or come across it? No one? OK, we've got like one at the back. So uh, basically, uh, what happens is we are still, uh, we haven't gone GA yet, so it's not <clears throat> in our resources, it's not available. So, but docs are public where you can actually access it and try things out. So how can you do that? It's where Google becomes your friend. You search for IoTS server documentation and uh, then you go to docs. So once you go there, since none of you have tried it out, so I'm assuming you're all new to uh, this thing, um, we have a quick start guide where you can uh, try it out. I'll, uh, I'll go into docs and explain it uh, more, but basically breaking it down, uh, you can try it out with a quick start guide. And also, we have some sample device types that have been created. So you can try them out too and like you know, uh, see what IoTS can do. And also, um, like Charita touched based on, we, have, we can create a device type. If you're a device manufacturer, you can create your device type using the Maven archetype and further develop it, we have a device manufacturer guide using the connected cup sample which Shabir touched on. So basically everything that you all heard today is explained in our docs. So you can try it out and so just to see how it works, I mean just to make you familiar with the docs. Um, so when you go to the IoTS server documentation, this is what it looks like now. Um, so you can start with the quick start guide. Uh, where we talk about uh, from downloading to trying out different things. Um, so the best thing about our quick start guide is, oops. Uh, 
uh, the best thing about a quick start guide is you, you don't have to have a device. So basically, this is a virtual fire alarm. So you, without having your own device type, you can try it out uh, and like experience what WSO2 IoTs can uh, offer. And after trying this out, if you can try it out with other device types, uh, specifically like uh, everyone, like most of you will have Android devices, so you can try out the Android Sense. Um, Android Sense. So we have like basically we try to guide everybody through the step by step, like what's next and all that, so you all won't get lost in the process. Um, and also after your tryout, then you all will want to know how. Okay, this is how it works. I want to do my own device type. So how do I do it? We have the connected cup sample done for you, end to end, like uh, explaining from writing the plugin, uh, specifically writing the APIs, and then the analytics and UI extensions, and then how we can all package this into the carbon feature and how to start it. So you can follow the thing, and um, we have you can refer the how the team has done the uh, sample, and you can create your own device type. And after doing that, uh, so basically doing this will. Uh, explain to you what IoT server is all about. Basically, that's the whole point of what we're trying to say. And you can create your own device type, um, which is also cool, which you can just um, try it out. Everything will be done for you. And you just like, you know, today or tomorrow when you go home, just try it out and see. And if things don't work, and if you find anything, like when you're following it, if you find anything, I'll tell you later how you can contribute to our documentation. And then uh, we emphasized a lot on our analytics, how you can add analytics for our device types. So we have a, a separate section uh, adding analytics for our device types. So you can follow the guides. Uh, some, since this documentation is work in progress, there will be things coming in. But your feedback will help us a lot. Um, and moving on. Uh, <coughs> so how you can contribute, try it out. Um, Create Jira's. Um, I know you love all developers. You all know how to create Jira's. Uh, so in the same way, go to this link and uh, search for the WSO2 documentation area. And if you think uh, docs can improve further, uh, create a Jira under the IoTS component. And we'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks. <laughs>